Hello, welcome back, and good to see you all join me again. This week, I want to talk about something slightly different. Um, I've talked a lot about how to make things efficient, some of the workflows I use, the platforms I use. Um, but at the heart, there's something fundamentally different about the way that we approach marketing for our clients. And I wanted to just kind of hover on that for a short period of time. So when I talk to businesses and CEOs, founders, uh, a lot of them tell me that their main interest is around lead generation. And rightly so. Okay. Money works the world go around. We all have bills to pay. And certainly in the SaaS and tech startup world, um, giving those subscriptions and recurring revenue is critical to getting on to the next stage of your business. Um, I've talked in depth about my views on you know short-term versus long-term planning on that. Um, and whilst you might need those short-term results right now, um, it's important to have one eye on what you're doing right now to build consistent pipeline for the future. And, and, and I've been quite vocal again about you know, um, sending cold emails, cold calls, all those sort of things, lead generation appointment setting. It is part of the business, part of the strategy, necessarily a very uh, lucrative one to start with, especially if you've got an experienced sales um, team on board. You do need to build that out and it generally comes with time. Um, so, you know, I'll, we talk at an early stage, um, Startup businesses wanting to be much more productive with their cash flow and not earn through their money and be more effective with where they do spend their money. And one of the things I discovered in my journey, again, don't have a traditional sales background, don't have a traditional marketing. What I discovered was that nine tenths of the problem with marketing right now, any size business, is the lack of human personality attached to that brand. So I'll explain what I mean by that. I speak to a lot of people who want to produce what I call B-roll footage, B-roll videos. They think that's what we do. Uh, you know, we've got a, a stock image of a crowded office and people with some forwards. There's a voiceover over the top and nice images floating in and floating out telling you about their services. And that has a place, don't get me wrong, that in itself is unlikely to drive real revenue. So what I see a lot of is businesses paying a lot of money to get really high quality content produced for them, which best sits on their website. You know, when you put that stuff out on social media and everyone just scrolls past because we see that a hundred times a day, it's because it's brand first. It's about business. It's about your products and services. Even if you bring challenges into that, there's not really representing your business on that video post. And that is the difference for me between how to gain emotional attachment to the brand and get buy-in from people before they go to your website. So I'm always a big advocate of Get your senior business leaders, your CEO, your founders, chief of operations, chief of revenue, on the camera, no matter how uncomfortable it makes them feel, and get them to record video content that will go out on your social media feeds. And um, it's surprising the amount of times I speak to people who are very confident leaders who have a team of five or six or more, even in small business, who have no you know, issues with being on camera, um, to their team meetings, doing all these different things. The moment I'd mention recording a video for the internet, they get really anxious. You're not alone in that. We all feel that to some extent, lesser or greater. The difference for me is I know, because I've experienced the value of doing it, the output from making that effort. I still hate seeing myself on video. I still hear in my voice bores me. I sound horrible to myself. But I still get loads of compliments from other people about content put out and the value that it drives. So I keep on doing it because I know that's what brings clients to me. When they're ready, they'll understand what I do, how I do it, why I do it, and what I don't do. 
And what I have then is much more qualified conversations. And aside from all of that, people build the trust first because they have attached me to the brand. I am the brand. That's important. That's critical for almost any business. Doesn't have to be the CEO, doesn't have to be the founder, but it does have to be some fairly senior who potential clients would take seriously when on camera. And that's not to say that you can't mix it up and have the rest of your team on there at some point as well. It's all possible. So to rewind back a little bit, when I talk to people who are anxious, and I'm talking to a guy at the moment who's who's very, very credible, very experienced in this field, very, very knowledgeable, um, but gets very anxious. The idea of appearing on video, having his voice on an audio file or on the internet somewhere. And also works in a business, in an industry where um, trust, confidentiality is critical. Okay. It's, it's paramount. As, you know, if he was to lose that for any reason, there is no going back on that for him. So I do understand his anxiety. And what we've talked about is you know, the act of recording the video, sometimes a starting point for a business. It's just an easy way for you to download your thoughts. So it's not to say, right again, when you first start doing these things, that you need to have the video there with you on it on the social media. Go away, and here's a, uh, here's a way that you can test this out of the form, right? Go away, write down your journey. How you got from university, from school, the career that you've had to the point where you're at today, write all that down in a, in a document. Tell me how long it takes you to do properly. Tell us some stories, get there, and then tell me how happy you are with that document, whether it conveys your story properly or whether it needs a lot more work and how long it took you to do it. Then get yourself on a camera, just you, laptop, record it on a webcam and talk for 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes about your journey from where you were to where you are now. And I guarantee you will get a much richer output from that video than you will from that document. And this is why we start with video always. The video itself can be secondary. I still maintain that it's the most powerful medium you've got. And even for clients who are anxious about their video, what I say to them is, let me produce the video. Let us produce the videos with you and for you, even if you don't use them right now. Because at some point, you might. You might become confident enough to do that, and then you've got the, the video content there. It's going to cost you anything extra for doing it. Because I use that for writing the posts for LinkedIn anyway. That's the whole point of it. If we were to sit there and try and write LinkedIn posts for clients, it's a very time-consuming tactic. It's a very time-consuming option, which is why a lot of copywriters are very expensive. Rightly so. Because it can take, especially if it's somebody who's in a complex industry, um, technical skill sets, it takes, one, a lot of ramp-up time to get to the point where they're happy with the outputs that you're creating, but also it takes a lot of refinements from the copywriter side of things. It's, a, it's an art. It's not, it's not simple. You don't just want to bang out a few posts. It's an art. What makes the process very, very simple, though, what I discovered, is creating the video content that drives those posts. So I would take a 30-minute interview or an episode recording, whatever you want to call it, and turn that into somewhere between 25 and 30 short clips of different subjects that you've talked about, topics, uh, thought patterns, different things. And there is a bit of an art in creating that content just as easy as you talk for 30 minutes and go and turn it into 30 clips. There's a bit of an art on our side of things in terms of how we turn content into lots of topics that are wide ranging and can be talked about in various different ways. Once you've got those 25 or 30 clips, what you can then do is go and write a post on the topic that you discussed. And you might even put a completely different context around than what you were originally discussed because you haven't got the original full-length episode there where you've, you've led up to that point, you've talked about the point and you've moved on. 
actually what you've said is probably salient in other contexts and other ways of seeing it. So you could probably take that one post and rewrite it into two or three different contexts and create that content, the text-based content really quickly. And for me, as a, as a post writer, as a copywriter, that's invaluable because one, I can now create something that's specific to you because it involves your experience and your um, opinions, your thoughts. And this is where generative AI falls down, right? You can't create all that stuff for you. It can finesse a post, create the basis for a post, and create the topics for a post. It doesn't know your experience. And guess what? You put that experience on the internet, whether it's video, whether it's audio, whether it's graphics, whether it's text. Experience your opinions, what you stand for, your motivations, all help you stand out from the crowd. And they give you the ability to stand apart from your competition, resonate with your ideal clients, become the business of choice when the time is right. That's why it's imperative, really, really important for you to consider using video to generate content, even if you don't release the video itself. Associate you, your personal brand, and your experience with business. The two should become synonymous. And when they do, that's when the magic starts. Because people stop seeing a faceless brand and they start seeing you or your team. And they associate with people far better than we do with abstract objects. That's human psychology one-on-one. -on -one. We communicate, we tell stories, we listen to stories, we pass knowledge on. All of those things, you know what, if you go back to the, the days of the cavemen, right? I mean, maybe not quite the cavemen, you know, the days of old, the, the, the most senior person in the tribe would sit and tell stories around the campfire. And they were respected because of their stories and their knowledge and their experience. Nothing's changed in thousands of years. We still respect people with experience, knowledge, and stories. Storytelling is three quarters of the battle. And we can do that far better, far more efficiently, and far more productively with video where we're just taught than we did in text. That doesn't mean to say it just has to be you. It doesn't have to be like this. It can be you start talking to a team member, a family member, you know, and then just get rid of what a family member has done or said. They don't have to be on the screen. They can be off camera. You can pause the camera in between questions. You they ask you a question. Pause it, get on top. There's a million and one different ways of doing it, but it still remains the most important way to communicate. And lastly, all of these conversations led me to have a bit of a brainwave. I have mentioned it on LinkedIn already, but if you haven't seen it, what I realized was that whilst we're um, not expensive, we are mid budget, right? So most of my clients. Um, if you're in the UK, um, most of my clients are about two to three thousand pounds a month, depending on what services they need. And I'll stress again, this is a bespoke service offering to you. It's content as a service, but it's content the way you need it built. So bespoke to you. And what I realized was even with the trust that you build up through video and through, it's still a big leap for any, even a medium sized business to start spending that sort of cash. Um, with, with a vendor who they've got nothing to prove for. So I've made it really simple for you all. If you're interested to work with us and to better understand our offering, to know what you're going to get at the end of things and get a flavour for what's possible without any contract, without any commitment, and a single one-off low-cost price with no set of fees, £500 for a one-off proof of concept, reach out and let me know. I've had some really great conversations with people over the last few weeks, and this is absolutely going down the storm. So much so that I might have to bang it for the next month or two while we get on top of things. So if you want to get in, get in now. Let me know that you want to, you want to try and do something. Um, and it's really light work. Okay? I'll help you record the first video. We'll do 20 or 30 minutes together. I'll turn that into as much content as is possible for you, for your business. 
and then on the back of it, I'll create some example posts that I would recommend posting out to, to LinkedIn or Facebook that tell the story of one or two of those those videos and we can move on from there. And at the end of that, do you know what? If that's not good enough for you, it's not a good fit for your business, fantastic. That's the point of the proof of concept. Throwing a little bit of money at this, we've decided it doesn't work. You move on, we move on. That's, that's fine. On the other side of things, if you decide that the value is what I believe it to be, which is amazing value for, for what you get, and you want to do that once or twice a month on a regular basis, then we can absolutely set that up and get you rolling from there. Hope that all makes sense. Excuse me for talking product for uh, our services for a change, because I don't normally do that in our conversations. But I really want to make people aware of that proof of concept option that I've not really offered before. Is you know, in six conversations, I've converted six new clients. So I do believe that it's really worthwhile doing. Um, Hope you all have a fantastic week and we'll speak again in the not too distant future. Bye-bye.